the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Oh, it's Ebro, Laura Rosenberg, French Montana is back hey. in the building. Yeah. We ain't seen this guy in years. Yeah. We got amnesia. Man, we forgot, man. Definitely. A lot of people forgot. Definitely. Well, you think that's a re the theme of your album uh, that just dropped? Uh, they got amnesia. Yeah. Uh, clearly saying they must have forgot. Yeah, and when definitely. you go through the 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 discography, the resume of French Montana, there's a lot of hits in there. Heavy, heavy on the amnesia. I think it was a, I don't know if it was a tweet or something somebody said where they they were trying to play you, saying that you had no hits without collaborations. You remember yeah. that? And you fired back. Yeah, I mean, you know, every every couple of years there's a new generation. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to rattle the cage and just like you know, like hold on. You know what I'm saying? I must have forgot. You know, there's people that, that started listening to French after Unforgettable. There's people that started listening to French after No Stylist. So, you know, just, you know, for everybody that, you know, just jumped on the boat, you know, had to tilt it over for a little bit. Now, <laughs> what, the pandemic uh, presented you with a number of challenges, obviously. Of but the, the biggest one was going into the pandemic. Um, yeah. I remember you went back to Morocco for the first time. Yeah. Mm. And uh, during that time, a lot of things happened with your health. And yeah. I think a part of this new album, obviously on the album cover, you're right? Yeah. You're in the hospital on the album cover. Mm -hmm. um, talk about what took place and what clarity you have now. Um, I, I, I don't think I'll never press that reset button like from, from the time when I started, from 2002 when we dropped the first Cocaine City DVDs, you know? I've been running. Me and Max B had that run from like... 2006, like 2009. Then after that, Chop It Down, Shot Caller hit. It was no looking back. Then Pop That hit, Forget About It. You know, so just like I went on for like a good 15 years of just going ham, ham. And and people who don't realize the level to which you grinded. Mm -hmm. Like, can you take for us sure. through that a little bit? Like, starting with the DVDs, um, you really were out there just hanging out wherever you needed to be. You were in people's yeah. faces every night. Like I mean, yeah, the, the DVDs were just like from like volume one we started. What like, year? What year is this? Oh, two? 2002 or three. I remember um, Pee Wee Kirkland. Shot the Pee Wee Kirkland. Um, we was like, man, how we going to do? Because everybody, there was a time and period where everybody needed a DJ to get in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like back when Papoose had... K Slay and back when, you know, Fab was really with Clue and 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 you know, you know, a bunch of people was just like everybody like needed a, um, um, a DJ. So, um, I was like, man, how can I get on? I don't got no DJ. So I was like, all right, let me let me figure it out. Let's get a DVD. So we got the Cocaine City DVDs. Everybody going through the door. I'm trying to get in through the window. You know what I'm saying? So I start putting myself in the Cocaine City DVDs. And what were the DVDs for people who didn't live through that era? What was the, on the Cocaine City DVDs? Basically. It's like world star academic and shade room. That's what the DVDs was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 like before the, that the, was even a thing. Yeah, That's, before yeah. that was even a thing. And like the like the, like the biggest podcast was the the yeah. cocaine. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. had everything. It had gossip. It had battle rap. It had new That's artists. It had catching people outside in the street. Yeah. All, all that shit. Yeah, and for us, our niche was we would get it was drugs on music. So basically. We wasn't just, you know, we we was getting the biggest drug dealers, whether at the time or somebody that did the time and was able to speak about it. So we was able to let you know this is the game if you want to get in it, and this is the hip hoppers. You know what I'm saying? So we was giving you both games. So that's why it was called Cocaine City. And when we did that, I dropped like 15 volumes of that. Mm. You know and saying? they would come every other month, if I recall. Was it every other month? Nah, every every six months a year. Every six months. Yeah. yeah, every six months a year we would drop one. You know what I'm saying? So, so we dropped like 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 14 volumes. It was us, Smack, and it was Come Up. And were your come would, up, and was your right. music was your music in the DVDs? Yeah. So yeah. You, so yeah. So we would put the drug dealers. We put a couple of rappers, and I would put my music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was um I knew Gabby at the time. I used to, I used to, I used to tell Gabby like yo. Yo, I'm about I'm about to be some. I'm about to be some. The French used to tell everybody I couldn't go anywhere without seeing French. Yo, my man. Yo, yo, what's good? How, yo, what's, what's popping? I'm like, I see you, man. I see you. I see you. Everybody though, like I remember Gabi playing my music. Akon walks by the room and he was like, Yo, who that? Uh, and that's when I had signed my first um, shopping deal with Convict. It was like six months a year, and I went up to go see Steve, um, Steve Rifkin. Shout to Steve Rifkin. I never told his story. I was like, Yo, Steve. I'm, he's like, yo, I got, I got a deal for you, two hundred thousand. 
this and that. I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Steve and Gabby, you know what I'm saying? Because um, it, it, it all ended up working out at the end of the day. When I got on, we was all working together. Um, so I think the, I think to uh, Rosenberg's original question, what you're saying about they got amnesia is people don't really know that story. Yeah. Even nah. though you did a few years, like right at the, before the pandemic, yeah. when your health went left, you yeah. did put out a documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, no, I didn't put out the documentary yet. Oh, you have You watched it. I saw it. Sorry. Yeah. Documentary on the way. Go. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and, oh, and, and you have all the footage from back then. Yeah. Oh, of course. And after the Cocaine City DVDs, I bumped into this guy named Max B and Chinks and everybody at the time. And that's when we came out with Coke Wave 1, 2, 3. We went on the whole run, the whole wave run. And, you know, we did. We, we started a lot of things that everybody's doing now, from the singing, rapping, to this, to that. Shout out to Max, free Max B. And after that run, you know, Max B got locked up. And I was, like, the most blackballed artist in New York City at that time. Because, you know, me and Max was just going at everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, we was beefing with the whole New York City and outside of New York. So when Max got locked up, I just had to go lock in somewhere and just and just focus and get myself out of out of, out of that hole because now I'm 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 in it fighting by myself, and that's when I locked in with Harry Fraud, locked in with Harry Fraud and just you know did eighty eight coops. Oh man, and that music that came out was just you know so so special out of out of the Bronx in Brooklyn. We were just locking in right there in Brooklyn in this little small room Fraud had. That's when just you heard. Sure, you want to be a baller. Just, 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 just that little sound coming through the concrete, like, like, all right, boom. Then we just cracked him in the head, shot caller. Then right after that, hit him with the pop. That I ain't worried about nothing. Ocho Cinco. It was just like, it was like to the point. It was just like, okay, like you got, y'all got to. Yeah, we got to play some French classics today. Uh, to. uh, they got amnesia's out, but y'all must have forgot, man. You know, we got to play that shot, Carla. Let's, let's go all the way back. The Summer Jam concert. Yeah, shouts to Harry Fraud. Yeah, so you must always, do you always sort of associate your ascent and everything that happened with Fraud? and the Because yeah. him flipping that Lords of the Underground was yeah. different. Yeah, definitely. I mean, all the joints we did from, from 88 Coops at the time <laughs> to playing in the wind to like, we got like classics together, me and Fraud. And, and Shot Caller just happened to be the one. Yeah, Shot Caller just happened to be the one. I remember I went, I went inside the um, strip club, I think, uh, uh, Perfections or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfections was a thing. Was. I, I remember the exact wow. day. It was Cass One, it was um, Camillo, and it was DJ Enough. I walked in, I'm in the VIP. That's, it came on. Dun, dun. It was like, this is it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. All right, let's go. So right, right after that day, it just... Just took off by itself. Well, and that's why you owe me money. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that still didn't really sound like you. Wait, French, I just I want to take you back real quick still. There was, I remember Fader did this really beautiful piece with you. It Morocco. Was called the, yes, it was called The Homecoming. Yeah. Where you, I believe it's the first time you went back to Morocco since yeah. childhood, right? Yeah, since my um, father left. And it was such an intimate piece because they actually took these beautiful photographs of him with yeah. your family. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us about that journey and coming back as French Montana? Yeah, I mean, when my father and my mother left, you know, I was born in Morocco. I, I left I left when I was 13 years old, so I didn't even know English when I left. So when I came here, I came with my father and my mother. They was both trying to find, you know, find the American dream. Of and, um, you know, my father was getting money, and I don't know how he got the visas, but when we got here, he just had a bunch of money that he was investing. One business here, one business there. None of the businesses went right, so he, he was like, I got to get back to where I live like a king at. So he went back to um to Morocco and he told my mother, he was like, yo, let's leave, let's leave French here. Let him do his thing on his own. We leave him with one our friend. She was like, nah, I'm not leaving my son out here. So he left and we we never heard back from him. You know what I'm saying? So like 15 years went by and my mother just stayed out here, you know what I'm saying? Just sacrificing, you know. Um so 15 years went by. Then after that, that's when I that's when I went back and did the fader. I flew out there and I and I, I met him again for the for the for the first, for the first time since he left. Right. Yeah. So um, that was it. That was what that faded thing was about. But that was all around the time your health was going south too, right? Yeah. No. This this is before. No, this is before. Yeah. before. This is like yeah. 2012. I, yeah. I think it was early. No, no, it was after that. It was like 15. Because okay. I because I just got my papers like four years ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's how I was able to get my mother her papers, and she didn't go back to see her family for 25 years. Mm. 
Yeah. And did, so she recently just got yeah. to go reconnect. Yeah, that's that, that, that's what the documentary was. That's about. what the documentary was. It's yeah, really part of that whole sacrifice, like you said. I don't think people really understand sometimes like how hard it is. People are so quick to just you know be like, yes, you know, immigrant this, but yeah, but not being able to see your family for decades. Yeah, for my mother, like, like you know, she she didn't see her brothers, sisters, and nobody for twenty five years. Right. Like when she went back, it was just a moment that we got we, we was able to capture in this documentary that I'm coming wow. out with next year. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, you know, they're crying, this and that. But for somebody just to sacrifice that much, you know what I'm saying, just for their kids, it goes to show you, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of immigrants out there that's, that's you know, that's, you know, doing the same thing. Absolutely. I feel like there are a lot of people, you know, whenever people meet artists or people in the industry, they want to get advice and they want to, like, ask people how to do, how, how do you make it? I really don't know if there's anyone better suited to give advice about how to try to make it in this game than you. Because, like, you literally, Thank you. you manifested it. Yeah. You, I mean, you worked your ass off. Yeah. And took step by step by yeah, step. Definitely. I mean, if there, if, I mean, I went through every motion, every motion that artists can go to. I mean, go through any motion that a hustler can go through, any motion that, you know, that's, that's there. I went through it. You know what I'm saying? I kept on, I kept on going. I ain't stopped, you know what I'm saying, through the, through the highs and through the lows. But there was times where it was just like, you felt hopeless and you still had to push through, you know what I'm saying? How, was there one relationship in particular that really helped connect the dots for you where you, once you made that relationship, other things started to fall into place? Whether it be business or artist, whoever, just someone in your life? Well, God, that was the only relationship that I needed to be in, you know what I'm saying? I feel like all relationships change, all relationships, you know, sometimes beneficial for them, you know, beneficial for you. It's like, I feel like, you know, once... Once you get once you get in a relationship with God, you do the right thing. But did you always have that, or did that come in, uh, later? Man, when you come from Africa to the South Bronx, sometimes you lose track when you're trying to make it to where you gotta get. I feel like anybody that that that's on the same because you gotta think about it, man. It's like I tell everybody this: it's like you better off making it to the NBA than making it in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? The NBA, what they got 28 teams, about 15 players on every team. Like damn near, the odds you know. are better, and they rotate all the time. Yeah, yeah it's so a lot that's, of that's that's that. And you are gonna make some real potentially make some real money fast. And that's right. in the even if you just get there, you'll get some pretty good money. And that's and that's in the hundreds. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about hip hop. You can't even name ten people. That's 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 hot every every couple months. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the, the odds is, you know, and anybody could do it if it was easy. So you so you talking about like trying to make it? You gotta lose yourself to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like the hustle gotta be relentless. You can't take no for an answer. You gotta be up when everybody sleep. Like you lose yourself. At how one do you point. how do you draw that line, French? Because you managed to be in everybody's face, mm -hmm. and and bust your ass, but have great relationships and not annoy people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people hustling annoy the shit out of people. Yeah, and they don't know that line of I'm hustling and I'm always out versus this motherfucker again, yeah. <laughs> which is because you were out every night. Yeah, yeah but you definitely. managed to be able to have social cues and yeah. balance relationships. How yeah. do you, how did you know how to act more or less? Like, um, I just I just think you know we when you're from New York, you just got flavor. You know, you know you you gonna know when to talk to people and not to talk and when to delayed. People. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause some, but also, you was outside from young. So yeah. you know how to be somewhere, have a good time, and not be annoying. Because if you was annoying in the hood, you're getting smacked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. said, if you were young Or head, they're going to you tell around, you you're annoying, we don't want you around. Well, no, but if you're a young yeah. head at, hanging out with people, and you outside, and when they get money, and you're annoying, that ain't... But I also brought value to the table. Right. You made mm -hmm. sure you always brought something. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of annoying people in the game right now. There's a lot of people that, you know, that's all in between, but... The value that they bring to the table is what keep them in that table. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that don't want to put up with a lot of people that they work with. There's people, you know what I mean? That 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 just happened normally with the game. But just coming from the Bronx and coming from New York and hustling outside, like you said, it's just you know you you know when you know when people's out there hustling and getting money, you know that you learn that from early. Like don't talk to them too much, you might get shot. <laughs> <laughs> who is the uh, who who is the first rapper you saw come through the Bronx? What the first rapper came through the Bronx? Like they, they, they were you this saw like legendary. Damn. I was on the I was in the Bronx when there was like Chicago Bulls, like when Michael Jordan was playing. Like I remember, I remember Big Pun coming to um to Katona Park and Big Pun playing us the Punisher. He just had that Benz with the big ass airplane seat. 
And I was like, yo, punt, this shit mad big. He was like, yo, twin, I gotta, I gotta be able to move in there. <laughs> wow. He played us, he played us capital punishment, shot the movie, the boxer. And we were just in there. I'm just in there like, yo, this is crazy. How how are you even supposed to keep up with this? Like, and you know, he was in there and he was outside, you know, moving like this, and he was like rapping with it. And I was like, oh nah, this is crazy. It was right right by 193 um Katona Park. We used to play basketball like shot the, uh, you know. And Pun just came through, posted up, and played the album. Yeah, he always used to come through over there and just just post up, play his music, and just, you know what I'm saying, just vibe out. I mean, the Bronx is like, you know, you got Slick Rick right there and Gun Hill. You got, like, there's stories. like That's like the the hip-hop museum, you know what I'm saying? Yes, right Literally. There. Universal Hip-Hop Museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shout yeah. to Universal yeah. Hip-Hop Museum. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, so it's like when, when I came from Africa and, and, and God put me right there, and it's like you can't even come outside because everybody raps, so you, so you need it, like, like they have like ten, like you know what I'm saying, ten fucking freestyles ready to go, like a top of your head. You rap, oh, let me hear something. Boom, <laughs> you gotta work up the ladder, like you know what I'm saying. So coming out the Bronx is really that's the key to my success. You know what I'm saying, coming but, from Gladiator School. But a, I, I think people don't a the, going back to what we was really talking about. People don't know where you start. They think you started unforgettable. Where yeah. he started Ciroc commercials with Diddy. That's, that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why the album is They Got Amnesia. Yeah. But some people it didn't even forget. They just yeah. didn't even know. They ain't that's been true. around long that's enough. That's true. Yeah, no, I, I I just happened to realize that my fans, that's that's how they get me. You know what I'm saying? That's how they get me to start rocking again. You know what I mean? They be like, yo, nah. It's just like going outside in the Bronx. Like, yo, my nigga, who you think you is, B? Like, you know what I mean? Like, them boots ain't even in style no more. Yo, my nigga, get rocking. <laughs> It's just like, you know. So you the, feel like your your fans on Twitter troll you by by saying reckless shit to you just to get you just motivated. To, just, to, just to get me to drop music and do, <laughs> and do things. <laughs> you know, but the, but it's it's been like that though, since me and Max B days, since, you know, I like I, I I always remember it. I even remember when I was a fan too of, of people. And I'm saying I used to go read up on them. It was just like, yo, they just that's how they reel you in. That's how they, you know. Rally your case, you know what I mean, to get you in the game. We got French Montana here this morning. We're going uh, down memory lane because I think a lot of yes, people sir. did forget. You right, know what I'm yes, saying? sir. New album, they got Amnesia. But let's get some classic French on right let's now. Go. You know what I mean? Uh, on the album, they got Amnesia. I've been waiting for the track list to drop. I'm only seeing this Fabio French record, Panicking, on the album. Uh, well, leading into the album today, yeah. dropping. Uh, which one? Which one of these twenty-one records you think twenty records you think is really going? Um, the one man, we should play think, right now. Um, right now. Yeah. Well, you could. I mean, since we were just talking about Big Punt, you could definitely play that. Um, we flipped it so hard with me, Doja Cat, and Sweetie. Yeah. So that whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, they yeah. just shot a video for it. I it's saw the hard. video. I didn't yeah. know you flipped it so hard for yeah. it. It's okay. So All right. Let's let's let New York hear this. They got amnesia, French Montana. So French, obviously, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about when we're talking about your history, yeah. um, the impact that Chinks had on you, and yeah. and how much his passing must have really leveled you. Yeah. Um. You know, he had a lot of momentum at that time, uh, and you guys had been building a lot. So we've had a few years now, you know, yeah. to to sort of. Uh, get used to, to to his unbelievable loss. So how do you look back on that time and just how his passing impacted you? Man, Chinks, you know, Chinks was like my motivation at times. You know what I'm saying? He adapt. He adapt to any atmosphere. He he was like, you know, right now Chinks would have been with Lil Baby at and like with, with you know, with, with a lot of, with, with Dirk at, with a lot of people at, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Chinks was just adapt. To, you know, to any situation, his raps are just getting better. And he sat there, he studied the game. He never complained, like, why am I not getting on so fast? He Like, he understood the process. You know what I'm saying? He was learning from my mistakes. Um, He had a great air for music. I didn't need to be there to hold his hand or nothing like that. Like, he was just he was, he was just a superstar. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, he learned from Stack Bundle Sue. You know what I mean? So he just, he, ha he had it laid out. But it is it's just that space, man, that space that between, you know, keeping it real and really form like forming into that superstar to that to that stardom. You know what I mean? That little space where a lot of artists, you know, lose their life at. You where know? you're not you're not all the way there yet. Yeah. But you are a star in Queens. Like everyone yeah. knows you. That's what I'm saying. And it's a, it's a very in tough. The work. Yeah. So it's like that space where you where you trying to keep it real in that space where, you know what I'm saying? 
where you don't know you're a superstar yet. I feel like that's the space where a lot of people, like, you know, rest in peace, Nipsey, how he was trying, you know what I'm saying, trying to keep it real with people right there. It's just like it happens to a lot of people like that, you know what I'm saying? Like Biggie, when he went back, tried to keep it real with L.A. And it's just like sometimes, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, a lot of lives get lost like that. So that's the best advice I give to any artist, like when you hit that peak, like try try not not you could keep it real, come back and keep it real, but try know, to know how to move different. Yeah. How did you how did you know when it was time to be like, oh, okay, I now move in a different way. I make sure that I'm covered. I go to certain places at certain like you don't shit, when I got shot in my head. That'll do it. <laughs> that often do it. That'll do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like every everybody everybody goes through it. You know what I'm saying? It, but some some people make it out, some people don't. And it's just the grace of God that yours happened to be a like, warning well, like shot. Tupac said it. Life is a rap star. Ain't nothing without God. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like how 50 got shot nine times. How certain people just go through those, you know, those moments where it's just like, you got to believe your life is not in your hands. Sometimes you come back for it. Sometimes you don't. Well, and even a step further, then not only did you get shot, but then you kept living on the edge with the mm -hmm. drugs and the alcohol oh, yeah, and the partying yeah, yeah, every course. night. And then I, collect, I ended up in ICU. So right. I knew album, I'm like, I went to ICU twice, I ain't going again. Like, you know, so it's just like, it's crazy. So so the first time you're in ICU, okay, yeah. uh, is why? Why were you there? That's when I got shot. Okay. First time, you know what I'm saying? And and second time, I went there because I never stopped. I never I never took it like a healing process. And I was popping pills, you know what I'm saying? I was drinking. Yeah. Now, yeah. were you self-medicating? Like, were you in pain from the sh being shot, or were you just addicted and got high from the lifestyle? I mean, from 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 when I got shot, I started drinking heavy and this, and I got skinny. <clears throat> I started popping perks and Adderalls. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and, and after that, it was just like you know, if you're making all these millions, like how Wayne said. If I'm drinking this lean and I'm making all these millions and doing my best verses and doing my best music, why would I stop? Mm. That's just how I looked at it. I looked at life like, you know, like it's time for me to have fun with it. My life is not in my hand. Mm. Let me enjoy it. So when I go, I could be like, I did everything I wanted to do. You know what I mean? So I did that until I ended up in the ICU. <laughs> Almost killed you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I ended up in the ICU. That's when I was like, you know what? You know, I got I to gotta close this book out right. You know what I mean? I got to finish my history right. And what does that look like now? What's the attitude <clears throat> change? Because you're going from saying, I'm going to just yeah. live my life, and however this happens, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's still it's still going to be like that. You know what I mean? But it's just like, it was it was so many, like, lost opportunities and so many things that I wasn't... Now, now I'm experiencing every high. Mm. Back then, it was just like, you know, I'm running through everything. You know what I mean? Like... On to the next. Now it's like, you know, I'm strategizing better. This album is my best, my my best album. You know what I'm saying? So, once you hear it, you'll see like what my clarity is at, like things that I'm talking about, and just that I'm, I'm exercising my greatness. You know what I'm saying? Better. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like when I hit ICU, people when they start over, they start from scratch. I started back from experience. You know what I'm saying? So. It's just it's just a whole different vibe, a whole different Montana. So are you are you sober now completely? You yeah. don't smoke, you don't drink, no nothing. Nah, nah, stop. You ain't got a lot of us. You might smoke a little little herb, little. Yeah, I mean, I might, I might, I might get back to it. But right now, no, 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 don't do it to prove nothing to me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not doing that. No, I'm saying, no, I'm not, no, I'm, no herb. I might do it to celebrate or something. You know right. what I mean, I just. But, but it's a different. It's not. It's you're not moderation. perpetually high anymore. Nah. I was just, you know, I was chasing the high more than money. But I was chasing the money too, you know what I'm saying? But now I just You feel associated like, the high with the money. Yeah, now it's just laser sharp. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just like there's there's like the, like somebody said before, like there's a window that's like open for 30 seconds, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta get through that window. And I mean there's shit pulling you from every side. But that's where that hundred million and billion dollars at. So you gotta get to that window. You know what I mean? You can't let none nothing, 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 nothing distract you. That's why I'm at with it. You made a lot of money in this game. Yeah. Um, you know, from I'm sure publishing, sales, touring, everything. What what, what did you make more money outside of music now, or is most of your money from music? Man, most of my music from everything, from stocks, from this, from that. So yeah, that. definitely. I mean, you know, 
since since I started. I'm one of them people that are always prepared for a rainy day. Even I, I barely spend money on myself. Everything is gifts. Everything. This rich humility is a gift. Like everything, you know me. So it's like I just like save my money. French just gifted me this chain. Yeah. I mean, it's very nice. Yeah, was pay gift. it forward. Pay it forward. He pays yeah. it forward. I thought that's just a great guy. Yeah, definitely, man. So you know, I always just in case any day I just get up and be like, yo, I don't want to do this no more. You know what I mean? So that's why I know my passion for music is is. Now your real. your ability to identify a hit song is is pretty damn good too. I think I'm the best A and R in the game. Mm. I, you know, you talk to Fat Joe. You, you and Fat Joe talk. Yeah, you and Joe, Joe might have Joe to battle. Pick up, find a hit out here. Yeah, 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 definitely. Shout out to Joe, man. <laughs> Y'all came together on that all the way up. Yeah, different kind of smash. Yeah, shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. So I, you're, you're I mean, I think I think maybe y'all should you know for the sake of the culture. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be a versus battle, but you guys I go might out be fine. I might, I, might be, I might beat Crack on the verses. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he got an unforgettable in there. I don't know, though. He's got that what's love, though. What's love nah, hits. it wasn't Diamond. Was it Diamond? What about Lean Back? Wait, 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 time out, time out, time out, time out. So you saw Fat Joe Ja Rule. Yeah. What was your opinion of how Fat Joe handled that? Who did you think won? Um, man, I think I think I, I think hip hop won that night. Uh, but <laughs> boo! No, I, I, Not up here, so. I, I, honestly, honestly, I thought I thought it was it wasn't um it didn't go hand in hand. One one was more mm. hip hop and one was R and B. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't really. That's, well, that's why some people thought Ja Rule won. Is because yeah. Ja Rule played the big hits and yeah. you know what I'm saying? They're all smashes and they, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was more partial to Fat Joe because of what you just said. Those records meant yeah. more to me. That's but what I I'm get saying. why too. people thought Ja Rule won. That's exactly what I'm saying. Me too. I love I So, love But you think toe to toe. Now you verse. Now, do you think verses should go to where it's like, okay, Ja Rule beat Fat Joe. Now Ja Rule should move on and battle someone else? Because I kind of feel like verses could go in that way. Where it's almost tournament style. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, so we pick a winner, but yeah. it feels like they don't ever want to pick a winner. No, because nah. they they want people to keep coming back, right. and I think there's, there's they, a winner. They know loser, that stop. they know that <clears throat> some of these artists who we love are quite sensitive and don't want to take an L. Right. Like I saw Jones last week. Yeah, Jones, his approach sounds like he openly kind of admits that they kind of took an L. Like, they're cool with it. They knew the locks won. Like, the lock... I mean, you can't lie to the streets. Right, you can't... They, and exactly... everybody... But I don't think Dipset took an L neither. I, th I think that, you know, I grew up to their music, like... You well, know, what is an L? So what? You took an L one night against one... It doesn't mean you're... Um, like when I did it, when I, I... You know, I was the first one to start the verses with me and Tory Lanez. I remember Tory Lanez was talking crazy, and I was like, yo, bro, like, I'm gonna spank you on this verse. Yeah, I remember that. So I, I, I called up Swiss Beats, and I called up Tim, and I was like, yo, I need y'all to keep the score. So that's how Versus really, you know what I'm saying, like started like that. But they never kept doing it with the score. Mm. So Oh, you wanted the score. I wanted, yeah, yeah, of and, course. And, and, it doesn't make no sense. And, and if you take an L, like, listen, boxers and UFC fighters, they take Ls. And yeah, you get we, back and fight and another. We did like 20, and mine was like 14, 6, Damn. Or something like that. So... That's what they got to start doing. They got to start keeping the score. Yeah, or it doesn't I don't, make I don't sense. Think, uh, a lot of people ain't signing up for that. They're signing up for the performance. Yeah, but that's the like party. the Floyd fight. Like, you can't do that. Right, right. Not the, you don't, you mean do Floyd Paul. The you want yeah. a real fight. Yeah, but it's something new we're still experiencing, I think, with Versus. That's why. It it's still really building. Affected yet. Yeah. What about um, now that, as of last night, Kanye and Drake are best friends, yeah. you think we'd ever, you think they'd ever do that? Like, I could see Drake actually doing it. You yeah. think Drake would do it or no? Nah. I think they just did it. What do you mean? They just did it when they both went at it with their albums, I think. Oh, that was their closest yeah. we'll get to a, a yeah, versus. Of see, I don't see... My, my thing with Kanye doing a versus is can a microphone be in front of him and he stay on... Topic. We're just doing these songs. Or does he go into... And let me tell y'all about why Polo <laughs> never saw the vision. And it's like, no, no, we're just talking about Passion music. Political talk. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because I could, could I, do you think anybody, you included, could anybody beat Drake in twenty for twenty songs? Jay Z for sure. You have Hove over everyone. No, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying because. Hove just got more albums and more everything. You know what I'm saying? It's got a lot. Well, of and uh, the other part that people don't factor in always to the verses is how those records drop. With yeah. the, the way the record happens. 
yeah. contributes to how you visually see it, right? We talk about this all the time. We recap it on the air. No. And when you visually see it, sometimes it happens different than if you just play the songs together. When you play the songs together and you're like, this song played against this song, you're great at hit factor or whatever. Yeah. But the way them shits come on... When, when the DJ drops that yeah. shit and there's an audience, but that's why got so many. That's why KRS Ooh. was so fun. Because when KRS came out for each song with his KRS-ness. I'm just, it, I'm just saying that because just the simple fact that a lot of people, like, when they watch the Dipset and, and the Locks, like, di like, the Locks was a generation before Dipset. Mm -hmm. Probably a generation and a half before Dipset. So they was they had more hits to play with. Like they was playing joints from from Biggie. Biggie Correct. Album. Yeah. Dipset. You know Dipset I mean? had their had a one. Yeah. yeah from two thousand two on. Well, and let's yeah. just not Locks fact, let's also fact that about that Dipset wasn't as prepared as the Locks. No, no. Because they don't do as many shows together as yeah. a. Well, the unit. Locks are a group. Dipset's a collective. A group. No, no. But also there was more songs there. Yeah, that's a true. longer career means more hits. Means more songs. Jay-Z have 24 albums, 23 albums or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Not so, that many, but he has a lot of albums. Yeah, like damn near 20. He's got, yeah, he's got uh, 12? No, way more than that. No. Because his 10th right. was uh, recent. Wasn't 444 his 10th? Mm-hmm. I don't know how many Jay-Z album, albums. No, nah, more than that. I'm telling you, French. Yeah, I don't think it's 20-something. It's not 20. No, no you 14, count tapes 15, and, you know, yeah. tapes. And now if you count tapes, there's more. But I'll tell you what, Drake's put out a lot of albums in that time. He put his output level's way higher than Jehovah's. Jay-Z was putting out an album every year. Remember when him and Nas was going at it? Yeah, but that like, went quick. Bro, we're, time flies, bro. Drake yeah. has been putting out albums that long now. Hov has Reasonable Doubt, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, The Dynasty, we'll count that. Blueprint is six. Are you counting Best of Both Worlds? I didn't know. Blueprint 2, 7. Yeah, count that. Too. Blue, <laughs> Black Album 8. Are you counting Kingdom Rock, Come Rock, 9. American Gangster 10. Blueprint 3, 11. Watch the Throne will count 12. Mm -hmm. Magna Carta 13. 444, 4, 4, 14. You're right. My, plus the R. Kelly albums. Yeah. What about 16, the Jay Z Lincoln Park? Yeah. What about Lincoln like Park? 17. That's, yeah, 17. I did it before. It was like 20 something. It, it, like when when you counted. add everything, the Beyonce EP, yeah. it gets close. I did watch oh, the throne. Okay, no, okay. he gets close no, to when 20. I counted it, it was like 20, 20 something. You know what I'm saying? So it was like 21, 22, so, somewhere around there. Drake now, but Drake, Drake's got 10? Yeah. Plus, does that include the future album? Yeah, well, everything, I think. Probably like. What about the playlist that wasn't actually an album? <laughs> yeah, what about the weird... When Drake puts out a project, but just four songs, the Dark Hours tapes. <laughs> Yo, you and Drizzy, now, you and Drake got how many hits together? Man, we got y'all got a at lot. least a good seven. Yeah, like bona fide smashes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you guys collaborate? Uh, in uh, did you guys get time to collaborate at all for this album, or the schedules didn't match up? Um, we did, but I think it's gonna go into deluxe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We oh, gotta finish well, it up. exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusive. Yeah, definitely. So there is a a new Drake French. Yeah, there's new Drake French. I mean, I'm sure we're gonna put it out. And do you guys have? I'm sure you guys have stuff that you've just never put out before, right? I mean, we got scratches and stuff like that. Just little. Yeah. What about what? Are, how, who do you have the most joints sitting in the stash with that have not come out? What about French and Rose? Man, I got joints with everybody. Just, just, just sitting there. Is like, there Rose? anyone out there that kills you that it never came out, and you were like, "Man, I did a song with so and so, and the joint just never dropped." Man, probably it would be this joint with Drake that that we that we were supposed to find a time to drop it. It's just about the right spot. Yeah, it's about the right time. Those are good ones, man. Yeah, those are the best Stays. ones. Yo, let's play some French Drake classics. You want to go quick. some some uh, no shopping, Stays some stay skimming. What? <laughs> now for the for now, a lot of these records, like even pop that stay scheming, these are I'm told and verify or not, these are a lot of ideas that you come up with and then you get features on. Like you're yeah. coming up with these hooks, you're coming yeah. up with these. Yeah. Picking the beats, coming up with the hooks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like behind the scenes, you're doing a lot of producing, I'm yeah, told. Yeah, definitely. Um I actually popped that exclusive. Chinks gave it to me. Mm. What? Yeah, Chinks was just playing. I was like, yo, bro, I need this beat. Then I remember I went to Ross Crib and I played it for Ross. I had sent it to Drake. Same because I remember when Drake first came here, he was supposed to come to um Vacant Lot Studios in Yonkers to come see me, me and Max, and record some music, but he couldn't make it there. So like six months flew by, 
Um, I had this, this pop that beat, and I sent it to him. He was in Europe. He did the verse and sent it right over. I played it for Ross. I was like, yo, bro, I need your verse on this. Ross went in there and knocked it out. I remember Ross hitting me like, yo, can I have this song? <laughs> you were like, nah. And, nah, I'm saying, me back in the days, I love Ross. Ross did a lot for me. So I was like, yo, bro, yeah, you can have it. I remember Chinks being in the car. He's like, you must be crazy. Give me my beat back. <laughs> yeah, you're going to give this shit away. Like, if you're going to give this to Ross, give me my beat back. I was like, nah, you know what? Let me call him back. Like, yo, bro, I can't, I can't do that. But it went on both albums, I think, was the end. No, 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 it was just my album. It just went on yours, okay. Yeah, it was on my, um, excuse my French, my first album. So then I remember I wanted to go see Wayne. He had a concert. And I was like, um, tour, um, what was um, his, his manager name? T Tess? Tess. And I, and I was like, yo, Tess, play this for him when he get out. I remember he, I, um, Tess took like two months. And I was just about to drop the song. Tez gave me that call, like, yo, Wayne just did his verse. We sending it over. And I just played it. I heard, bitch, stop talking. I was like, oh, it's man. It's so we crazy. I sent it to Puff to mix it in at NASA production. I remember Puff was like, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool mix show record. I was like, what? <laughs> I was yo. Like, yo, send me my record back, fam. <laughs> yo, 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 hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked shit to him about that since then? Hell yeah. I was like, yo, bro, your ears were shocked for that one. <laughs> yo, that's hilarious. <laughs> Puff doesn't get it wrong that often. Yeah. That was more than a mix show record. Yeah, yeah. Pop that was one of them. It mean, started at mix show. Just now, I mean, just now, me, me, Puff, um, me, Puff and The Weeknd got a record and, um, or his album and, um, 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 21 Savage and this and that. And I remember Puff just gave, he gave me the record. As soon as I finished producing and everything, I added my verses and I gave it back to him. I was like, no, this is it. <laughs> I'm like, you don't play with my ear no more, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so Puff got an album coming, you said with he got a record with the weekend and yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the record. Yo, Puff, the what's going on, man? Where's this music at? Mm. Yeah, he dropped, yeah, he dropped at the beginning of the year. All right, all right. Hey, French is giving us everybody business. They gonna be all right with all this. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, definitely. Why, I don't want nobody texting me after, like, yo. We're promoting. Yeah, exactly. He's working right now. Yo, they got amnesia. French Montana. The album is out now. Go pick it up. Thanks, French. No doubt.